How's it going? I'm Anthony Todd, and I'm going to show you how to do question three of the AP Physics C Mechanics FRQ set number one. So this is set number one. I have done uh, questions number one and two in previous videos if you want to go check those out for those solutions as well. Okay, uh, question number three is actually the one that wants to use a lot of calculus. Hey, okay, hence AP Physics C calculus based. Okay, so the first two questions, I don't think there were really, there, were, there was no calculus at all. And here we go, this question is, we're gonna have a lot of it. So here you have a triangular lot of length L and mass M has a non-uniform linear density given by the equation, a lambda is equal to the gamma X squared, okay? Where gamma is is 3M over L cubed and X is the distance from point P at the left of the rod. So, okay, something like this. Using integral calculus, show that the rotational inertia I of the rod about its axis perpendicular to the page, okay? Uh, and through point P is 3-fifths uh, three ML squared. Okay, the first thing we need to understand is we know the moment of inertia is equal to the integral of R squared dm, where R is just actually your any um, distance. Well, in this case, it's um, they're using X, and X in this case is actually equal to L, so that's not too difficult. Um, we know that the dm, so what is dm, is actually equal to the linear density of this object times some distance x. Okay, so we actually know what that is. We know what lambda is right there, or gamma, and we know this is x squared. So we can actually go ahead and plug this in right here. So we get this, so our dm is equal to lambda x squared. All right, and that is with dx and we're gonna take this and plug it in here. Well, this R, like I told you, doesn't necessarily have to be an R. Let's just gonna make it an X in this case, and we're gonna integrate this from zero to L. So this is gonna be X squared times this little gamma symbol right there, times X squared, DX, and this, remember, this is a constant. Anything when you integrate is a constant, you just pull it up front, equals uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. zero to L, X to the fourth, DX. Okay, so now we've kind of set this up. So now all we have to do, we understand that this is, remember this is just 3m over L cubed. So if you want to, let's go ahead and integrate this real quick. This gives me this. Um, the integral of i is equal to x to the fifth over five from zero to L, all right? And I know that L, well in this case, L zero is just, oh, that's gonna be zero. So I have this, so I have like that is equal to L to the fifth over five. And now I'm gonna plug in this with this is, which is gonna be, so this gives me this, three fifths uh, M, oh, sorry, three M over L three, forgive me. I kind of skipped. Um, there it is, three M over L, which is our lambda, times L over five, or L to the fifth times five. We can actually see that this cancels out with that and we left with three M, that's L over two, so L squared over five, and guess what? That does check. So that is the first part and how to integrate that, the moment, or to find a moment of inertia um, for the AP physics uh, first part, question three. Now, B states, uh, determine the horizontal location of the center of mass of the rod relative to the point P. Express your answer in terms of L. Okay, so again, we're still using integral calculus. Now we know the X, so the center of mass is equal to the integral of X dm all over the integral, I should say, of dm. All right, and I think that's actually on your equation sheet that you had. And this pretty much we know works out to the integral of x times that, so integral of x. Now we know that this is actually before, we know what dm is, we've solved for dm up here, which is just x squared, all right? So that's our dm over m. So we kind of had, we kind of did that. So this actually gives us this, the integral of x to the third and over m, all right, dm. And we can kind of know right here, let me still have this little, sorry, oops. So have that right there, forgive me, honey, I didn't need that. So this is still in here. So I now know this, that the integral, that's the constant, mass of the constant will be x to the fourth over 
4, and we are still integrating it from 0 to L. And uh, what is that? That is uh, 3, what is that? 3M over L cubed divided by M uh, times L to the 4 fourth right there and we actually see that these cancel out right there and that cancels out with that so we actually get uh oops sorry, this is over four we actually get uh was that uh yep yeah, three over four l so the center of mass of this object is actually somewhere about here so there is our center of mass so that's kind of the path that you're wanting you to do this all right, so now it says for an axis perpendicular to the page, if the value of the rotational inertia of the rod around point P is greater than, less than, or equal to the value of the rotational inertia uh, around the rod at its center of mass. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, the mass on average, so the mass is on average further from point P. If you look at it up here, this is point P where we're rotating it. This is where our center of mass is, okay? And so pretty much this mass is further away from point P. So from point P, so then the center of mass. So what that means is that is going to give us a larger moment of inertia. So think about this. Well, well, I would like to think about. Imagine like you're holding like a baseball bat, like you're actually holding this, and you have a lot of mass right here. So if the center of mass was right here, closer to it, it'd be you'd be able to move it quite simply. But as this mass gets further out, so imagine like holding on to this baseball bat with more mass being added to the, you know, out on the very edge, it'd be really hard to move because you have a lot of torque being produced around this point. So that's why remember, it's harder to move. The moment of inertia is going to be greater. Okay. So that's kind of a, a simple explanation of that. Okay, okay. Remember, I'm doing the best I can. All right, now let's look at this one. Ooh, okay, all right. So it's now the rod is released from rest at the position shown. The rod begins to rotate about the horizontal axis, perpendicular to the page and through point P. On the axes below, draw and sketch the graphs of magnitude of the net torque on the rod and the angular speed of the rod as a function of time. Okay, this one is a bit tricky. Oh, sorry, I got sneeze. <coughs> so now we have this. So we, now we have a rod. It's going to rotate about this point. It's going to rotate downward with some, some angular velocity. All right, and we know that torque is equal to I omega. And omega is actually, or I should say omega, is just alpha, so d alpha dt, so the change in alpha uh, with respect to that. And how we would look at this. Well, let's look at this. Um, we know the center of mass is right here at 3 fourths L, so we know that at the very, very top, we are going to have a lot of torque. And as the object rotates all the way down and comes to a resting position, I'm going to have no torque. Okay, and if you look over here, um, the omega and the torque, they're, they're proportional, but if you think about it, at the very beginning, this object has literally, it's not moving, so it has no angular velocity, and then at some point up here, we're going to end up up here somewhere. Now, the question is, what are these graphs going to look like? Okay, this is kind of interesting. Um, we know that torque, uh, let's try to think here is equal to I omega, and we know that the torque is about the object's center of mass, so that's 3 fourths L, and as we move down, remember we're trying to find this uh, perpendicular as the object moves, L theta, so that's our adjacent hypotenuse, we're gonna use cosine there. So there's gonna be some sort of relationship between cosine and, uh, and whatnot. So, if we look at that, and I, what I kind of do tell my kids is I start plugging in things on my calculator a little bit. So as this object starts to slowly move, the torque and torque is going to, um, I would say, decrease uh, faster as we go. So we're going to have a lot of torque at the beginning, but as it starts to go, this torque is going to kind of drop off a little bit exponentially like that. 
And we know that torque and angular velocity are proportional, so I would just say that the uh, angular velocity with respect to time would just be kind of the flip-flop of that. Does it make sense? We're not, going, we're not going fast, but as the torque increases, the angular velocity will also increase. So those would be mirror images of, the, of each other. So I think that suffices. All right, again, um, who knows? We'll see. If, there's any, if I find any corrections, I'll um, make sure the post is in the description. Now, part E. As the rod rotates from the horizontal position down to the vertical, its magnitude of angular acceleration on the rod increasing, decreasing, or not, uh, or is it not changing? Okay. Well, we can actually look here that alpha um, is the change in angular velocity with respect to time. So actually just kind of by like drawing this, we can actually see that even if we didn't get the 100% shape correct, we know that the angular velocity starts off at zero and ends up at some position high, okay? So it is not going to, what's the word? It's not going to not change, all right? So we know that's, that's true. And as we can see here, the slope of this line, okay? So the slope of this line is actually equal to our angular velocity. So we can see here it starts off pretty high, and as we start to curve, we start to flatten out. Like I said, even if I didn't get the shape of this correct, per se, um, you can still see that starts off at zero and ends up at some high angular velocity. So that's going to assume some type of, in a, I would say, um, well, decreasing uh, angular acceleration in this case. So we started off kind of high, and then we ended up being sort of low. Okay, so I hope that helps. All right, and then the last part. Ooh, what is this one? Okay. So now the rod is allowed to rotate through, and it's saying what is the actual speed of the rod about uh, the very, very end here. Okay. Now we know that this object is going to torque itself, and it's going to move with an angular velocity. Now we know the angular velocity at any given point of this will be roughly the exact same. Okay. Now remember the Tangential velocity will change with respect to the actual radius. But as the object kind of moves down, that's really not going to change for us, okay? So that's going to be kind of simple. So we know that the center of mass, so imagine this object's up here, and the center of mass is 3 fourths L, and we know the object's mass times gravity is being applied at that distance. So we know this object has a lot of potential energy at the top, and as it rotates, it actually is gaining rotational kinetic energy. So that is uh, I omega squared over 2. Okie dokie. So if it was me, uh, we need to solve for, let's see here. Uh, look at this. This is a kind of a tricky one. Let's solve for the H, yeah. It's like that H right there is kind of... Throwing us for a loop here. So what is that H? Let's go ahead and just do this. Let's go ahead and work it out, see how it goes. So we have M G H. Well that actually the H, oh yeah, it'll just be three fourths L. Okay, sorry, telling me. Yeah, because this is gonna be like a right triangle pretty much. So that's be three fourths L. So that is MGH is equal to one half times I. Well, we found the I before, which is 3 fifths ML squared times omega squared. Okay, so we can actually see here that these M's will cancel. This L right here will cancel out with one of those L's. Uh, what else here? Oh, and a 3 will cancel out right there. So we really have um, one second, my phone's ringing. All right, and that, sorry, I had a phone call. And this actually gives me this. We have G over four equals L times, L over 10 omega squared. So solving for omega squared, we get 10 G over four L equals omega squared. Okay. And what does that give us? That actually works out to be, uh, let's see here. 
what is that? That's 5G over 2L is equal to omega squared. And if we want to go ahead and do that, we know this translation, V is equal to R times omega. So um, you can do this two ways. You can actually uh, solve for this. We can go omega squared would just be V squared over R squared. So this will give me 5G over 2L is equal to um, V squared over R squared. We're on the case that this R would actually probably be our length. This R would actually be our length right here. Okay. And so this gives me L squared times 5G over 2L is equal to V squared. So that goes away. That goes away. So solving for this, so I get the length of 5LG all over 2 is equal to V squared. So go ahead and plug stuff in. The square root of 5 times 1 times, I'm going to use 10 over 2 equals V. So what does that give me? Yep. Remember, mass doesn't really matter. So 5 times 10, it gives me 50, divided by 2, 25, square root. Yep, oh, it's 5. So the velocity at the bottom at point S is actually 5 meters per, oops, forgive me. Oh, that's possible. It's actually 5 meters per second. All right, so 5 meters per second. So I hope this helps. And if so, um, please give me a thumbs up and a like and subscribe. I will try to upload set number two um, as soon as I can. So I have done questions one, two, and three on um, similar pages. Thank you. Have a great day.